Tom, is that another Bill sitting here in Capitol Hill? No, you midwit. That's James Madison. The basketball player? The father of the Constitution. The father of the Constitution? Yeah. Mr. Madison, why are you hanging around the Supreme Court? Madison wrote a report in 1800 about what the states can do when the federal government overstepped its bounds. He said the parties of the Constitution, by which he meant the states, had the power and the right to judge whether the Constitution had been dangerously violated. And the state's rights to do that extend to violations by the president, violations by the Congress, and violations by the courts. And of course, today's view is that the states have no authority whatsoever, and whenever we get screwed by any branch, well, like good losers, we're supposed to sit back and take it. So nobody listens to James Madison anymore. Or they pretend to, or they put him up on a pedestal, but they never mention the report of 1800. Uh, have you heard of this little something called the Civil War? Well, actually, Michael, it's not quite that simple. The Civil War had to do with secession, and you can argue about that. But it did not address the question of what is the role of the states in the Union? Can they make judgments about constitutionality? We've seen that in our own day. State after state has legalized marijuana in complete defiance of the federal prohibition. And the tanks not exactly rolled in all these states. And the only time the Supreme Court has weighed in regarding medical marijuana, they sided, as usual, with the federal government, saying the states had no right to do this. And the states said, duly noted, and went ahead and did it. So the spirit of James Madison is actually still very much alive today. So how did we get to this point? When did it change that the Supreme Court has gone from restraining the federal government to enabling it? Well, almost right away. So let's talk about one of the cases that we're all taught to revere that was actually decided clearly incorrectly. McCulloch versus Maryland, 1819. Almost nobody remembers the particulars of the case. That's not the part that matters. What matters is what the Chief Justice, John Marshall, had to say about implied powers. And in that decision, we hear the Chief Justice telling us that, of course, the federal government has powers beyond the ones expressly delegated to it in the Constitution. Now, Marshall knows this is not right. He was in attendance in Virginia at the Richmond Convention that ratified the U.S. Constitution, and he heard with his own ears supporters of the Constitution assuring everyone that this government will have only the powers, quote, expressly delegated to it. Tom, don't you think you're being a little unfair to John Marshall? No one cites those ratifying conventions. They're like a historical curiosity. Because, of course, if we did return to consulting the ratifying conventions— we might have to scale back federal power, and they don't want that. 